What's up, y'all? All right, today I'm going to show y'all how to refurbish slash rebuild one of these old electric motors. So you can see in front of me I have a 5 horsepower, 240 volt, single phase electric motor. And it's a lot bigger than, you know, a 5 horsepower would normally look because this is a true 5 horsepower motor. It's from the 90s. I mean, the thing weighs like 100 something pounds. So it's worth rebuilding. And it had a grumbling noise every time I turned the shaft and it was, you know, grr, 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 grr. and I thought it was a bearing. It was this bearing right here. It failed. It had a little bit of water up in there against the case somehow and it failed. So I got to get a new bearing and we're going to replace the one in the back too while we're at it because there's no sense in just doing one. We're going to hit it with a little bit of fresh paint right here. Don't hate on what products I use because it was cheap. Um, you've got your capacitors right here that run the motor. On this particular motor, like I said, it's 240 single phase motor. So we have two start capacitors in here and one run capacitor in here. Now I already replaced the run capacitor because it was blown and I'll show you the old one right here. Really shouldn't be touching this without gloves probably. But here's the old one and you can see how bulged it is. I mean it was oozing stuff down the side. It's all corroded. It's all rusted. Look at that. Disgusting. So you can see how bulged it is. And I can't believe it even turned on with this. But we got a new one and it's in there. Now my new one is a lot smaller than this so I had to make up a little bracket you know to hold it. I just used some strips of sheet metal and I bolted it down up under here. And it just wires up the same but yeah. If it looks anything like this, replace it. If it's bulged, cracked, uh, you know, looks bad, replace it. So you can see this one right here, it's so rusted, you can't see the part number on here and see how many microfarads it is, which you need a voltage and microfarads. Those are the two ratings you need to get a new one. So the voltage, it doesn't matter with a capacitor in DC or AC, if the voltage is higher than the one you're replacing. So this one is a 370 volt capacitor. I got my new one is a 440 volt capacitor. You could go a thousand volt capacitor. It doesn't matter as long as it's higher than your voltage it's running on. So 240 volts, 440 volts is much higher. So we're good on that. And now the microfarad rating is, is capacitance. So you'll see UF, a number and then UF. And let me see if the box is around here. 35 UF and that's microfarad. And you can see 440 volts at 60 hertz. So that's what we need. You can see this one's a lot smaller so I had to make up for it. I had to make a little bracket in there. But um, yeah, definitely replace your capacitor so you're in good shape. I mean, if they're leaking. If they're not leaking and it runs, I mean, don't worry about it. But, you know, if you're going all the way through it, you could replace them all. I mean, it just depends how much you want to spend on it. So, that capacitor is replaced. Now, we want to make sure that the bearings on each end are good. Because, obviously, that's really important. So, this bearing is toast. And I'll give you a shot of it up close here in a second. The bearing in the back is good, but I'm replacing it anyways. All right, so I got the back piece back off, and when you take this motor apart, you're going to want to make sure and be extremely careful because it probably has wires connected to this back piece. So you can see the two leads go on here. One goes here and one goes here. And you can see there was a number on the wire, so I just marked it here. Six, that's what was on that wire. Seven, that's what was on that wire. And this is part of the circuitry that starts your motor. So you want to make sure you don't damage it. Um, right here these contacts you can get in here with some rubbing alcohol or fine grit sandpaper and touch them up uh, right here you can touch them up too just get down in there and clean those up make sure you have no corrosion on any of these connectors you know rubbing alcohol and a toothbrush is your friend uh, you're going to want to make sure and get in here you know just clean everything up get it nice and clean that way it's good when you put it back together all right, now we got it apart in two pieces. So you can see I have the rotor laid off to the side here and the housing and stator and capacitors and all the other stuff 
the whole assembly right here, the case. So it's off to the side. Now be careful, this thing will roll right off the bench and break stuff on you. So you can put wrenches and stuff under it so that it doesn't roll on you. But right here, we have the motor. And here's the stator right here. This is what generates the magnetic field which moves this around and causes it to spin. Okay, so if it's an old motor, there's only so much you can do. I mean, if the stator's in good shape when you take it apart, you know, it should be a good running motor for you. If it's all burned up and stuff, you're probably going to have to get another motor because otherwise you'd have to rewind the whole thing and it involves way too much work that an individual can do. you got to take it to a company. So it just depends on what shape your motor's in, you know, how long you've had it. If it was your grandpa's motor or something like that, it might be worth fixing up if it's really old. But if it's, you know, pretty new, it's cheaper generally to go get another motor or already rebuilt motor or a good used motor. Get in here with some compressed air, blow it all out, get in there with a toothbrush and some rubbing alcohol, and get up in here and clean all this crud that might be up in here. Dirt, you know, spider eggs, any kind of garbage in here you don't want in here, just clean it out. Okay, you can see I already have it taped off, but just ignore the tape because I'm painting it here in a minute. There's a bunch of wires up in here, and you're going to want to check all of these where they go in and out of the case for chafing, any kind of burn damage, any kind like that, you know, anything bad that you don't want to see on a wire. And you need to replace those wires if they are damaged. Now, if it comes out of the coil and it's damaged, it's going to be really hard to replace um, unless you're really good at soldering. You know, you can make another lead and bring it out and put a connector on the end of it. Okay, so you can see the bracket I made right here. It's just a piece of tin. It doesn't have to be anything special. I mean, it just holds it. You want to make sure it doesn't vibrate all over the place. But once I screwed it down, it was nice and tight. So you can see the new capacitor is much smaller than the old capacitor. So... It fits just like that, real nice. Just like that. Now don't go drilling holes in here to screw this thing down because you're gonna hit something and mess it up. Okay, now you can see these right here. There's two of them. But you can see they're kind of wedged in here. They have this insulation here so that it doesn't short out to the case. All these wires look good. I took them off. You want to take them off and clean them up. So if they have any corrosion or anything like that, if the caps have been leaking, you're going to want to hit them with some rubbing alcohol and toothbrush. So get those nice and clean. And you can see there's two of them here and they have a range. This range right here is 710 to 852 microfarads. So don't try to put these capacitors as a run capacitor because they will blow up. I'm not joking about that. They're not designed for that. You need a run capacitor for a run capacitor. You need a starting capacitor for a starting capacitor. So you can see these are kind of like plastic, something like that. Um, these are in good shape, so I'm not going to worry about them. They're not leaking or anything. If they were, I'd replace them. So we're going to put this back up on here, and now we're going to move on to the shaft slash rotor. All right, so we're gonna use a little electric impact here because we just need a little bit of hit it a little bit and rotate it a little bit. All right, y'all, I got it off. So this bearing, it's still in good shape. Um, like I said, new is always better, right? Ah! Anyways, I'd like to know what's in here. You know, do it once and do it right type of deal. It's cheap insurance, so this one's bad. This is a 6204. This is a 6206. You can see they're two different sizes. Excuse my cute hammer. 
All right, so I finally got my bearings in the mail. So, yo, let's check these things out real quick. I'm not going to stand here and talk all day about them, but I want to unbox them real quick for y'all. Koyo. You can see it's genuine. It's crazy. It says Koyo and then the company that makes it. But that's beside the point. I got two of them right here. Koyo. There are the part numbers. It might not be the same for your motor, but... So you can see this after it, the ZZ means that there's a metal shield on both sides. And the C3 means that it has looser tolerances than normal. And I wanted the, uh, you know, without this C3, and everywhere I called they had the C3 ones, and I guess it's like, you know, I'm not a bearing expert, but I guess it's like commonplace now to use the C3 bearings because they generate less heat and stuff. I don't know. All I know is it has a little bit extra clearance inside of it. So that's good. It reduces noise and heat. And they said this is what you want for an electric motor. So you're probably going to have a hard time finding bearings just like that normally. So C3, it doesn't really matter. Everything else is still the same. Let's see what these things look like. Japan. Oh, feels like a bearing. Way better. Six two zero four Z. It's the same thing. The ZZ C three. But you can see the ZZ is metal on this side, metal on this side. I mean, you can have a bunch of different possibilities. Metal, open, uh, you know, no metal, rubber, like I covered earlier in the video. But here's the old one. Huh? pretty bad. Here's the new one. The other one was blown. The big one was blown, but I can't find it. It's got two coats on it. I waited 48 hours or whatever it said on the label between coats. Now let's put the front cover back on. Here's our front cover, grease it up, grease the outside of the bearing. on the right. All right, there we go, we're done. It's all put back together. Now we just have to do the final step, which is take the tape off. I'm gonna peel this tape off. Oh yes, moment of truth. Come on.
sweet. It is done, it's done, yes, finally. It took so long to paint this thing and get it all tuned up and get the parts and stuff, but it's finally done. All right, now this part of the air compressor is done. We got the motor all tuned up and ready to go. You see it's looking good? Let's test it out and see if it will work and if it's quiet now. Alright y'all, so that's it for the video. This thing is running great. Don't forget to check out the links in the description for all the other videos in the air compressor rebuild series. Don't forget to uh, subscribe down there for more videos in the future. Drop me a huge thumbs up and comment. I'll check you all in the next one. Later.